Hi, and welcome to another Arc Daily interview. Today, we are talking with Joaquin Navelli, technical consultant and part of the team behind the project of the Barrio Mujica in Buenos Aires and winner of the fourth category of the UIA 2030 award centered on participatory land use efficient and inclusive planning, basically responding to the SDG 11. Hi, Joaquin, how are you? Hi, Grisel, how are you? It's a pleasure for me to be here. And it's great to actually have you here to, to talk about the project. So can you please start by introducing yourself and tell us uh, more about your background and about the team behind the project? Yeah, um, OK, I'm Joaquin Lavelli, and I'm an architect from Buenos Aires University. I have been working on, on this project for six and a half years, a, a long time for me. And before I worked in a private sector, but nothing as significant as this project. And our team is made up of more than 200 people. And the most, or, or most importantly, we're an, we're, we're an interdisciplinary team. Uh, where you can find political scientists, sociologists, social workers, engineers, architects, lawyers, among others. Um, it is quite a young team, and I think the average is under 30 years. Um, and in summary, we are a team of young people committed to thinking and rethinking current public policies to guarantee the right access to public services uh, as it does in the rest of the formal city. In referring uh, to the access to drinking, to drinking water, sewer, electricity, accessible and adequate public spaces, and adequate housing for human development. That's a big thing. Among team. other issues, I'm oh, sorry. Among other issues uh, related to development of opportunities, such as access to public health or, or education or even formal employment. Over the time, I understood uh, that, this, that this strong common goal that eventually became a strong conviction or, or a vocational feeling is the is the engine to make uh, it possible for this ambition project to be carried out. So I was saying that it's a, very, it's a big team that is working behind this project and it's a project that also took a long time to be achieved. So congrats yeah. uh, on the win, uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, and um, can you tell us more about the intervention about housing upcycle program in Barrio Mujica? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we decided to submit to, um, to submit the project to this competition in the participatory, participatory land use uh, efficient and inclusive planning category because it summarizes clearly the objective of our project. Hmm. Um, the same, the main objective is to ensure uh, families access to adequate, affordable, safe, and resilient housing and land. That improves their well-being, prosperity, and economic, economic opportunities. Along the process, um, the family go, grow through participatory instances with the technical and social support from start to finish. Um, in this way, it is possible to think together which are the appropriate interventions according to the reality of each family. To each, fa each family, sorry. Mm. And the final objective is to leave all the conditions ready for the regulation of land and to fulfill um, the, the right of, the, of all the families of Barrio Padre Carlos Mujica to obtain their title deed and eventually be able to pay for it. Okay, so basically you're also training them, if that makes sense, yeah. for them to take the lead. 
So what do you understand when you say upcycle? The title of the project has the, has the word also upcycle. What does it mean mm -hmm. to you? Yeah, it's, it's weird because, yeah, well, we, we call mejoramiento in Spanish, but mm -hmm. I think the, the translation, reason, the translation or the, the reason is we believe in recognizing that what is already built in this heritage, sorry, it, we believe in recognizing that was is uh, already built is the right. heritage and identity of the the families of the neighborhood and in addition uh, we seek to value the historical self-constructive capacity that neighbors have and with this premise we try to promote self self-management as response to the interventions in the house and the same time at the, at the same time sorry to increase the participation of the neighborhoods at the um, at the time of doing the work in cases uh, where where the work is not safe we 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 or i don't know where the lives uh, of the families living in the house are at risk we work with companies or cooperatives, but that is that is why the program is called Upcycle House and, or Cycle Upcycle House Housing and not New Housing. You're working on the existing uh, thing, whether it's uh, yeah. the house, yeah. whether it's on the family. So literally doing that. And why do you think? Uh, why do you think this specific project has uh, won this award in this category? Why is it special? I think that's, uh, I think resume uh, the, this, I don't know, the, 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 the category to the name of the category resume or, or yeah, it summarizes. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the category summarizes uh, clearly the objective of our project because mm. it is participatory the, in, to start at uh, the end and we, we, we do all the, the things you need to, to use a land uh, efficient and inclusive uh, with this kind of interventions, I don't know. Yeah, so the project actually, uh, basically to repeat what you said, it, uh, the title of this category summarizes the project since it's, uh, it works on, on the basis of uh, this category also, which are also the basis of the project, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. how was, how did you, how are you able to make your approach inclusive and to include everyone? Because a big part of this project is uh, is related to the community. Yeah, it is. Um, it is important to know that the housing improvement project is part of a much larger social, urban, and economic integration framework, in which uh, all all aspects of habitat are improved. For example, the, the access to transport, to public transport, basic water, electricity, sewer services, and also pu the public equipment such as healthcare, uh, healthcare centers, uh, schools, nurseries, cultural centers, training, employment centers, and quality public spaces. And all this is linked to the social support about health, education, gender, sports, and culture that the government gives. Uh, we understand by, we understand that by implementing all these public policies, the residents of Barrio Padre Carlos Mujica will have uh, the same opportunities and responsibilities as any other citizen of city of Buenos Aires. But all these 
all this is possible if we work together with uh, the 40,000 neighbors. In, this case, in the case of housing improvement, um, families are involved based on the multi-scale multi -scale, uh, participatory approach. We work on in block, plot, and housing scale with different topics in, in each of them. Um, in the blog, we, we do informative and participatory workshops where we work on diagnosis and mm -hmm. validate the macro interventions, for example, opening backyards. In the plot, um, in the plot scale, we generate agreements between the families where we, where we make explicit the uses of, of the spaces. Uh, the private, common, and public spaces, um, public uses, sorry. And in the house, in the house scale, we design the project with the family, resulting in the necessary modifications that each family needs in order, of, in order to, to fit their dynamics and the future perspective of how uh, their pro the, their houses, I don't know. And finally, the interventions carried out uh, involve some component of self-management. When, when the house is in good condition, the family can carry out the, the intervention and they either work uh, inside the house or work uh, the integration, the integral improvement and this allows the the neighbor to be part of the decisions and give their personal touch self-managed interventions have been very successful too in in terms of satisfaction and ownership of the improvements so basically you have different types of interventions and not just it's not always just in the beginning where people are implicated, but also in the process and the decision making in the final outcome. So different scales also, um, not just of intervention, but also of uh, uh, public particip participation, if we can say. So after the Barrio Mujica, what other projects are you working on and where you're implementing the same type of approach? Um, well, uh, the integration project of neighborhood is regulated by two laws, that is very important, and limits the housing improvement program only to, to this uh, Barrio Padre Calo Mujica, to, mm. to, the bar, to the Barrio Padre Calo Mujica. And, however, it should be noted that at the same time, very interesting and similar integration projects are being Carry, carry out in other informal settlements in Buenos Aires, such as Barrio Fraga, Rodrigo Bueno, and Villa 20, uh, among others. Uh, the Ministry of Human Development of the City of Buenos Aires is in charge of all uh, of these projects. Okay. So obviously when you're working on a neighborhood, since like you are just like you guys are doing, uh, we need, uh, uh, let's say, municipal, municipal uh, also decision making and actions to be able to actually fulfill and do a certain outcome. Finally, why do you think it's important for architects to engage with the sustainable development goals? And in your case here, it's like uh, responding to the SDG 11. Yeah. Um, for this answer, I need uh, to bring uh, some data to the conversation because I think it's, uh, it's important. And the cities, uh, the cities occupy only 2% of the Earth's the Earth surface, but more than half of the world's population lives there. They also consume 75% of the total energy and are responsible for 60% of greenhouse, green, sorry, greenhouse gas emissions and global waste production. 
And Latin America is the most urbanized region in the, in the world with, with 81% of, percent of the population living in cities. They have a higher percentage than any other region. 35% of the population live in cities of 1 million of, or more inhabitants. And there are six mega cities with more than 10 million inhabitants, such as Sao Paulo, Ciudad de México, Buenos Aires, um, Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Bogotá, y Lima, and Lima, sorry. Uh, lack, uh, lack of access to urbanized, uh, urbanized land and accelerated urban growth without sustainable planning are challenges or our Latin American cities are facing. It's co its consequences included environmental and territorial imbalances motivated by the impulse of urban expansion uh, and the operation of unregulated markets territorial inequality and social segregation. There is a phrase, there is a phrase that repeated a lot in this area, and uh, the sustainable development goals will either be achieved in the cities or they won't be achieved. Mm. It's necessary to understand that architects and urban planners, uh, urban planners, sorry, are one of the key actors uh, in these issues and that we need to commit ourselves to the new ways of doing politics. In this way, we'll be able to respond to the different challenges at the local level to achieve a highly sustainable, inclusive, resilient and safe world for all as mentioned in the new urban agenda and the 2030 agenda. That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you, Joaquin, and thanks for sharing all these insights and all these uh, information. Do you want to add anything else before we finish this uh, conversation? Thank you, and sorry uh, uh, for, my, for my English. <laughs> You have a pretty good English, you don't have to worry about it. And the project anyway speaks for, for itself uh, also. Uh, congrats uh, once more for your uh, uh, achievement and, uh, and good luck for other achievements also. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor for us to be featured in Art Daily. We are very proud uh, of the project and it's really nice to have recognizing for it.